The Atlanta Braves. Remember them? They won the World Series last year with a team that caught a lot of people by surprise. So why are we surprised that the defending champs have decided to act like champs here in the second half of the season? Everyone was putting them out as just another wild card team. And now they may have a shot to be the first National League team to win back-to-back World Series titles since the Big Red Machine. Jake Mastriani of Locked On Braves is here. Guess what? We're going to do Locked On MLB. You are Locked On MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans. Yeah, we're doing this live. We're doing a live stream. Those of you who are going to join on, feel free to chat along and welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast. We talk about all of Major League Baseball. I believe we are the 29th most popular baseball podcast in America. That's something to shoot for, kids. Your dreams can come true. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Look at my lower third right there. You can call me Sully. I am an Emmy-nominated television producer, and I've also been a writer, a filmmaker, and an actor, a comedian, a teacher, done all sorts of crazy stuff. And for the last decade, I have been a baseball podcaster. And I've been here now for four seasons on the Lockdown Podcast Network. And you can follow us at Lockdown MLB Pod. Thanks so much for making us your first listen. And uh, Lockdown MLB Pods is for Instagram and for Twitter. Uh, my personal account, I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. So, yeah, the Atlanta Braves at the beginning of August got their butts handed to them by the New York Metropolitans. And it looked like the script had been written, the Mets were the dominating team, and the Braves, the defending World Series champs, were going to be a wild card team. That's nice. You feel good about yourselves. Well, since then, the Braves are on a rampage. Now, as we're recording this, they're battling the Oakland A's out in Oakland in front of friends and family. But the Braves are making a real run, not at a wild card, and not just to win a division title, but to have home field advantage in the division series and maybe have one of the most healthy teams in the playoffs. Jake Mastriani is the host of Lockdown Braves, has been a guest on here before, but it's been too long. So I'm very happy to have you back, and we're going to talk a little bit about Braves baseball. How you doing, Jake? Yeah, doing great, Sully. Thanks for having me on. Definitely a, a good time to do so. The Braves playing some good baseball right now. Yeah, I think I only have you on when the Braves are doing well. Uh, I don't know what that says about how I run this podcast here, but uh, I like to do things like I've done this many times where I take a peek at where we were a month or so ago. So this show is we're recording this in the evening of the 6th of September. Uh, Let's go back a month. August 7th, the Jacob deGrom beat Spencer Strider and the Mets uh, I believe pull off the sweep of the uh, four or five or four out of five. That's right. Four out of five. Either way, it was a, it was a pretty decisive uh, statement. The Mets were uh, five and a half games behind the Los Angeles Dodgers for the top spot in the national league. But the Mets had established a six and a half game lead over the Braves wasn't their biggest lead, but with a few months to go and the Jacob deGrom added to the Mets, it looked like, all right, a uh, wild card time for the Braves. Since then going into Tuesday's game, the Braves won 20 out of their next 25 games. And I want to make this point because some people may want to try to paint this as a Mets choke. Since that point, the Mets won went 15 and 11. They've played winning baseball since then. When you establish a six-game lead and then play winning baseball, you don't think you're suddenly going to see a lead fold, but it's it's only because 
the Braves don't lose. Yeah, and I think if you go even further back, you go to the beginning of June. I believe I saw a stat the other day. The Mets have played, you know, over 20 games over 500 baseball since then, and they've lost nine and a half games in the standings. That's just how well the Braves have played really over the last several months. But you bring up that series in at City Field where the Braves lost four or five, and honestly, we're just outplayed in every way by the Mets in that series. And I think it really was a wake-up call. I think the Braves were playing scared for whatever reason, even though, like you begun the show saying, these are the defending champs. And, you know, lest we forget, they did win the World Series last year. And I really think that did kind of wake them up and say, hey, if you're going to do this again, you're going to repeat. You need to start playing like champions. And they looked really bad, you know, in a lot of games against the Mets, you know, not just beginning of August, but a series before that. And then they really kind of went on a tear. Like you said, the Mets came to Atlanta a little over a week later, and the Braves won three of four against them to really get, get back in this race and give themselves a chance. But honestly, yeah, I mean, the Mets are a good team. They are playing great baseball. They're a really good team. The Braves have just really been playing unbelievably well since the beginning of June. I'm going to bring up a year. Uh, I'm just going to turn back the way back machine to 1993 when the Braves were stupidly part of the National League West. Uh, I think it was the last year they were part of the, the National League West, and that was the year when they were they had a great run with the Giants. A lot of them to paint the Jazz choking away a 10 game lead in uh, well, they had a 10 game lead in late July, and the Braves acquired. Fred McGriff, and then they won the division on the final game of the season. Um, the From that moment, the Giants had a 10-game lead. The rest of the season, they played 11 games over 500. You know, they had a, they played 580, 585 ball that year down the stretch. And I'm just going to use my, uh, my illustrious calculator here, and I will let you know that uh hold on i should have had my calculator already out forgive me this is bad production quality here um a a 585 winning percentage is playing the equivalent of a 94 win season after having a 10 game lead and the Braves just the Braves went 49 and 16 so that wasn't a choke by the Giants that was the Braves just played on a played in a rampage and I think there's a similar thing going on with this team. I do not think the Mets are choking. I do not think the Mets are collapsing. I just think the Braves are playing at an unbelievable clip. And they seem to have remembered who they are. And that is going to probably have a lot of Met fans pull their hair out. But, uh, heck, that's how you defend a title. Yeah, I mean, look, and you have to, like I said, it, at some point you got to wake up and remember who you are and that you are the Braves, you are the defending champions. That said, I, I just said it, I believe the Mets are a very good team. You know, one of the best teams in all of baseball up there with the Dodgers and Astros and Braves and Yankees or whoever. And But if the Mets do blow this at the end, I think it has to be considered – a choke just because of the schedule they have in September. Now, up until this point, they're playing great baseball, but they have the weakest schedule in September. That's why I've been telling Braves fans, look, this is going to be a hard road to go through to get, to come back and take over the Mets because their schedule in September is so easy. But, I mean, to your point, Mets have played great baseball. The Braves have just been one step better. A lot of that has to do with the starting pitching. You know, Max Freed's been unbelievable all year. Charlie Morton's been, you know, kind of hit or miss, but Spencer Strider is one of the best stories in all of baseball, in my opinion. Kyle Wright having a breakout season as well. So for me, it's all about the starting pitching. We know the offense, you know, one through nine can hit home runs. They've also got great contributions from rookies like Michael Harris and Vaughn Grissom. Um, so, I mean, they're, they're getting it really, you know, all up and down the roster. But for me, it's the starting pitching, particularly in those Mets series, that makes the difference when, the Mets were taking down the Braves. They were getting their starters out after four or five innings. And next time around, that series in Atlanta, they were able to go deeper in the games. And really, the Braves starting pitching has just gotten on a roll. Well, and I think one of the things that certainly happened with that Braves team after losing the, the final game with DeGrom on the mound is they just – it gave, they had a boost of energy. I mean, it's, it's absolutely – they've seen a big boost of energy. 
And it's almost like they had a built bar. And if you haven't tried built bar puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. That may sound like hyperbole, but it's not. And there's a new flavor. Jake, are you ready for the new flavor? Settle down. It's indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. Let me introduce you to the new favorite cookie dough. Chunk puff. Say that three times fast and have a light and chewy texture. They got real cookie dough chunks. And, of course, they're covered 100% real chocolate. All the joys of eating cookie dough without that hassle of making it. You know how long it takes to make cookie dough? The hours and hours it takes to make cookie dough? Well, forget about it. Built.com has circumvented that, and they've made it healthy for you. That's what most of us would ask a genie for, for cookie dough that's healthy for you. It's only 160 calories. They've got a whopping 15 grams of protein in each bar. Run to Built.com to snag a box for you, your family, your loved ones, or you can just hoard them all for yourselves and be greedy. Like all Built Bars, the new cookie dough chunk puff is covered 100% real chocolate. That means they're healthy and tasty. Chocolate covered cookie dough with a light, fluffy texture. Mwah! What's great about Built Bars is that all their bars are made with collagen protein. Did you know that, Jake? I did know that. No, look at that. That's your body absorbs that more efficiently. Provides tons of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good. It's good for you. You're going to love the new cookie, dough, chunk, puff, whatever you need, a snack for your workout, a late-night treat, or just want to grab a quick bite. Built is the perfect protein bar. They taste better than a candy bar. Ditch the calories, the fat, and the sugar. Grab yourself a Built Bar and use promo code LOCKEDON15 when you go to Built.com and get 15% off your order. Use LOCKEDON15 at Built.com. Now, it's interesting that the uh, we're with Jake Mastriani of uh, Lockdown Braves in case someone is jumping into a podcast midway through. I'm not sure how you do that. Uh, but the... One of the interesting things is, yes, the use are the defending World Series champion Atlanta Braves. And yet, even though there's a lot of people who are left over from the previous team, there you have some people like Acuna was obviously injured on the World Series team last year. Matt Olson is new. Um, was William Contreras on the team last year? I can't remember. Uh, he wasn't really part of the the championship run. Right. I mean, he was on, on the team, but he was up and down. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, so he's more of a contributor this year. Obviously, Freed and Wright and Morton were on the squad, but Spencer Strider has emerged as a legit Rookie of the Year candidate. And, hey, is that Ken Lee Jansen on the team? Hey, is that Jake Odorizzi on the team? There are some other faces who weren't part of the team last year, and – uh there's a slightly different feel. This doesn't feel like it's the same, necessarily the entire same cast. And I think uh, for someone like Acuna, who watched the series from the bench, I'm sure being part of a team that wins it on the field is a heck of a motivation for him to push the Braves over the top. Yeah, it certainly is. And we talked about that coming into the year. You know, you get a new guy in Matt Olson coming to his hometown team, obviously taking over. For Freddie Freeman is a huge task, but, you know, obviously wanting to be part of this winning culture and win a championship and bring a championship to, you know, his hometown in Atlanta. And then you got Acuna, like you said, wasn't part of that. And, you know, Acuna, you know, he wants to be part of it so bad and be such an impact player. He's really struggling coming back from that ACL injury. He said it himself right. that the knee is hurting. He's just not fully there, but still, you know, 75% of Acuna is better than most players out there, and he's still contributing in big ways. But they, I talked about it a minute ago. It's really, you know, the rookies that have stepped up. Michael Harris, Vaughn Grissom, Spencer Strider, you know, just really doing big things. And then the emergence of Kyle Wright, who really broke onto the scene in the World Series, was kind of thrust in yeah. there after Charlie Morton broke his leg in Game 1 of the World Series. He ended up getting a, playing a big role in that series, you know, pitched – a good game against the Astros. I believe it was uh, game four there. So, uh, you know, he has played a big role in this as well. I mean, on paper, and I said this when the season began, this team is better than the team that the Braves just won the World Series with. I mean, top to bottom, I think this is a better team on paper. Um, so, you know, they're more than capable of, of winning the division, winning a World Series title. got to get it done on the field. And I think that is a big motivating factor to have guys who, either weren't big contributors, whether injury or just 
weren't part of the team last year. I think that, you know, keeps that hunger going to, to win it again. I, I love the Vaughn Grissom story for a bunch of reasons. Um, first of all, I mean, obviously Ozzy Albies is a, you know, a fine player and was a big contributor to the team that won the world series last year. But I love it when a team reaches into their own system and finds the replacement from within. To me, there's something almost poetic about that. That there's, if I'm not mistaken, Grissom was in Double A, mm-hmm. and they just brought him up, and he has he's provided a spark for this team, and they haven't lost a step. In fact, they've probably played some of their best ball with Grissom in the starting lineup. And you're right. You kind of you know the, you had some amazing contributions from. Obviously, Jock Peterson and Eddie Rosario and Jorge Soler were the three unheralded pickups who became postseason heroes last year. Uh, but you're seeing st- you're seeing the Harris's. You know, you mentioned the Harris and Grissom. These are two guys who are under 22 years old mm-hmm. who are coming in and and being plugged right into the system. Strider, I think, is. I mean, you look at Strider's numbers. I mean, he is definitely. If, if they win the division, he is almost certainly going to get a start in the division series. He has struck out 174 batters in less than 115 innings, has only walked 38. His ERA is 267. You know, his whip is under one. This is for a rookie, hmm. you know, who is who was not at all, uh, you know, expected to be much of anything. Um, I'm going to just say one thing. This might be controversial, and if you if this offends you, you can end this right now. You can leave. You can grab your built bars and go home. I've lived in Los Angeles for the last bunch of years, back and forth between here and the Bay Area for the last few years. I have seen Kenley Jansen pile up saves in the regular season and blow playoff game after playoff game. I am perfectly fine handing him the car keys for the final out during the regular season. I am not perfectly fine giving him the ball when the game is on the line. I've seen it happen way too many times with Los Angeles, that big game after big game, blown save after blown save by Kenley Jansen. Again, I'm not saying he's a bad pitcher. I'm not saying that he is, uh, you know, that he's someone to to look down upon. I am saying I've watched enough games, and someone say, but Sully, he's got a career postseason RA of two point one three, yada yada yada, da 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 da. I know, but I've watched it. I've watched him pitch horribly in the postseason in the World Series, in a couple of his World Series, blown save after blown save. I just I, I've seen it too many times with Kenley Jansen, and we saw last year using the bullpen properly. Play to the matchups. Don't worry about the saves. Don't fall for the tyranny of the save. I I can just see him walking off the mound with his head down, a la Alejandro Pena. I can just see it happen again. And just I'm, I'm begging you, if if you want the Braves to win again. I'm not saying don't use them. Just don't make it automatic. Yeah. I think Brace fans are starting to see that a little bit. He has really struggled here, particularly of late. I think he's blown a couple of saves in the past week alone. Um, that kind of has Brace fans questioning, does he belong as the team's closer, particularly in one run games and one run games. He has, he has not been great. And a lot of that, you know, it's a little bit of luck, but when a runner gets on, it's really been the walks. You know, he's really struggled with walks the last three years now. His walk rate has gone up and his has a slow delivery to the plate. So a base runner is pretty much a double because you can steal on him so easily. And then you get a blue hit, and next thing you know, the game is tied. So, you know, Brian Snicker is loyal to a fault. He's going to continue to run Kenley Jansen out there and just hope that you know, the back of the pace baseball card plays out more often than not. But that's where I think it was big. The Braves went out and got Rysel Iglesias at the trade Thank deadline. You. Thank you. He has that ability and he has been really good since coming over to the Braves. And I would hope, 
you know, if Kenley doesn't turn things around, that they do give Iglesias a shot to close some games, especially, you know, in the postseason, obviously, when it matters the most. It's telling that in several postseason series, including the COVID World Series, that Dave Roberts turned to pitchers other than Kenley Jansen to close out big games, including the World Series, and including the Game 5 that put him up 3-2 to two after Kenley Jansen blew the save the night before in the wild Rosarena stumbling home game. Um, they have – I'm not – again, I'm not saying Kenley Jansen's a bad pitcher who should be benched. I'm just saying play to the matchups and don't play to loyalty. Rizal Iglesias is, has not been good. He's been fantastic since coming over. I mean, uh, look at the just, I mean, I know it's a, just a, he's only pitched in about a dozen games, but he's been spectacular since coming over, and he's a talented pitcher. Matzik's a talented pitcher. Chavez is a talented pitcher. Minter's a talented pitcher. McHugh is a talent. They're all talented pitchers. Jansen as well. I'm just saying don't automatically do it. You know, yeah. to play to the situation, and uh, trust me, Kenley Jansen's World Series ring he won when Julio Arias clinched the World Series in 2020, that ring feels just as good on his finger. You know, so I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm just, it, it, I'm not a Braves fan. I'm not going to pretend I'm a Braves fan. But I have you on, and it would be interesting to see a National League team win back-to-back titles for the first time since the Big Red Machine, especially when you consider the Braves of the Bobby Cox era had that opportunity, all those great teams, and they couldn't win back-to-back titles. This great Dodger team we have now couldn't win back-to-back titles. The great Phillies team with all those great pitchers, to have this team of all teams be the one to pull that off, uh, I think it would be kind of interesting. No, oh, yeah. I mean, I think it would be really interesting. And I would obviously, well, I know you would. <laughs> <laughs> I would obviously love to see that. I think it would just solidify things. I mean, people, you know, and just hearing you talk, I mean, it sounds like people really don't believe the Braves were the best team last no. year. And I, I can understand that. And I get that. They got, they got hot at the right time. And I certainly understand that. I still believe they're one of the better teams in all of baseball. I believe they were last year. I don't think they played like it for four months. And I believe they're one of the best teams in baseball this year. And I'm glad they're at least coming out and showing that with the way that they're playing. But winning another World Series, I think, would kind of put, you know, just their stamp on this that, hey, we are one of the best teams in all baseball. We will be for a long time when you look at all the young talent that this team has. And, you know, to win, you know, multiple World Series, whether they do it this year or whether they do it in years to come, I think makes this one of the best decades in Braves baseball because you go back to the 90s and early 2000s, like you said, and even though they had that run of 14 division titles, only coming away with one World Series title always puts a little bit of a damper on that decade of Braves baseball. So, again, whether they do it this year or whether they do it over the next five years, which I still think they'll compete for another World Series for the next five-plus years, I think that will ultimately, when it happens, if it happens, kind of mark its stamp on this being one of the greatest decades of Atlanta Braves or franchise history, actually, baseball. The kind of run that the Braves are going on now reminds me a little bit of San Francisco at the beginning of the 2010s, where I think you go through each of the year, you could probably pick a a different National League team who may have been a little bit better. The, the Giants wound up beating Philadelphia because they had the pitchers who could match up with the Hallidays and the Hamels and the Oswalds, you know, by throwing Lincecum and Kane and Bumgarner. But, you know, 2012, that Nationals team was great, and actually Cincinnati's team was great that year. And obviously 2014, they were a wild card team. But each one of those years, their talent peaked at just the right time. You're seeing – you know, all throughout the 2010s and going into this year, almost every champion, with a few exceptions here or there, were not the best team of the regular season, but the team that got it all together down the stretch. The Braves last year, the Nationals, you know, you took a look at, okay, the Cubs were, you know, the Cubs and Red Sox were, uh, and Astros were all like elite teams during the regular season. But, you know, Kansas City coming down the stretch, or the Giants in those years, 
you see, or obviously St. Louis being the biggest one in 2011, this team and St. Louis, it's funny, on the, the Mets and the Dodgers have been all year long the best teams in the National League in terms of record, and yet right now I think the two teams I would not want to face in a postseason series would be Atlanta or St. Louis based upon their health, based upon their momentum, and based upon the fact that they're just playing at a at a higher level. And, uh, man, if this team, if this Braves team can avoid the wild card round, this could be a very scary team in October. Yeah, and you look at it, they could get Ozzy Albies back soon. He's on a rehab assignment now. Mike mm-hmm. Soroka's on a rehab assignment now. It looked really good in his last rehab start. I mean, the Braves are at a point now where they could be getting – even healthier and even more dangerous going into the postseason. I mean, both of those guys are all stars. I know they're coming off pretty significant injuries. Roga hasn't pitched in two years, so not even sure what kind of role he would play. But you know, it's one of the better pitchers in baseball when he was healthy. So uh, I think it's a very, a very good Braves team. I think they stumbled out of the gate the first two months, whether that was a World Series hangover or whatever it may have been. Again, since the beginning of June, they've been one of the best, if not the best, team in all of baseball. So I think they're right where they, they should be. Again, I think this team on paper is better than the team that won the World Series last year. I think all the pieces are in place. Uh, I think they're starting pitching with the emergence of Spencer Strider, who you alluded to earlier. For me right now, he's a game two starter. I think he's the Braves' second best pitcher at the moment. And then who do you have your would, one, Freed? Yeah, Freed, Freed's your one. I mean, he's your, yeah. your Cy Young guy. He's your horse at the top. Mm-hmm. But – then I'd go Strider, and then you go Morton or, or Kyle Wright, whoever you really wanted to after that. And I think the bullpen is deep. You mentioned, you know, Iglesias, Minter, Jansen, McHugh. Uh, you know, they've got good arms back there that you can trust. So, I mean, this Braves team is, is built to win, but there's some good competition out there. The Dodgers are good. The Mets are good. You know, the Cardinals are hot. The Braves just lost the series to the Cardinals. Both of them. Cardinals are good. The Cardinals Two of those, are you know, one-run games. It was a really yeah. tight series. So, um, Kinley blew one of those games. But, um, you know, it's just, you know, they're, they're good. And that's all you can ask for as a fan, especially after winning a World Series. And follow up the next year and still be able to compete. We see so many teams that, you know, build up a good team, win it, and then that's it. And they're done after that. This build, Braves team is is built to last and be competitive for years to come. Well, my two favorite teams, just in full disclosure, I'm a native New Englander, uh, so I grew up a big Red Sox fan. And my late father was a giant fan from the days of the Polo Grounds uh, right up until the, the end of his life, you know, loving the San Francisco Giants. I bring that up because – the decade of the 2010s saw three Giants titles and two Red Sox titles. But in each of those years where they won a title, they failed to make the postseason the next year. The 2011 Giants, the 2013 Giants, the 2015 Giants all sat home. The 2014 Red Sox were a last place team and the 2019 Red Sox were incredible underachievers. So you see that when you see a World Series winner, you see that drop off which is shows you how hard it is to repeat as champions. Uh, there's a, I am fascinated by the image of whoever the person is on the mound when a series is clinched as the, uh, the, the final pitcher. And no pitcher has ever thrown the clinching pitch of a World Series for two different franchises. It's never happened. You've had bullpen closers, you know, do it for various teams, but no one's ever clinched a World Series for two different teams. Charlie Morton clinched the 2017 World Series for the Astros. So if and if he can, by some convoluted reason, be on the mound, he could make history. I have no idea if anyone else is interested in stuff like that, that sort of stuff absolutely fascinates me well think about will smith clinched who was on the mound when the braves clinched the world series last year he's now pitching for the astros so i don't think he'd be in a position to close out a series for the astros but hey, no. it could, could happen but you don't know you didn't want to pick julio urias some of the times the people who uh clinch it are not the people you think mike montgomery 
played most of the 2016 season with Seattle. His first, first professional save was game seven of the 2016 World Series. Because oh. both teams had run out of pitchers. Mm. And Mike Montgomery, you know, the fourth lefty in the Bra- in the Cubs bullpen, came out and got the final out. And that was career save, minor league and major league. Career save number one was game seven of the World Series for the Cubs. You don't always know. Like Chris Sale clinched it one year. You know, Mike Timlin. Sometimes you get weird names being the guy on the mound. Again, I'm personally fascinated by this. I don't know if anyone else is. But I'm sure you, Jake Mastriani, would love to see Charlie Morton become the first to clinch a World Series for two different franchises because that would mean he was doing it for the Atlanta Braves. Yeah, absolutely. I would certainly love to see that. Don't care who clinches it out That's as true. long as it's somebody for the Braves. But if it's a position be player, Morton, yeah, position play. yeah, let Acuna come in and throw whatever it takes. But yeah, I would love to see that. Who would you be happiest the most on this team? Acuna? Uh, yeah, I think we're Matt. I mean, Matt Olson. I mean, to come over and take over a legendary type player and Freddie Freeman and fill those shoes and come in and bring a World Series title to Atlanta. I think that would be really cool, but I'd love it for Acuna as well. You know, it, it it ate at him not to be out there on the field. I mean, this is a guy that plays for the big moment, loves the big moment. To not able to be a part of that in the action, I, I know he's he's just dying to to do that and be a part of it on the field. So certainly would love that for him. Let me ask you, the last thing I want to ask you, because you're a big Braves guy, and Freddie Freeman – was a Brave for many, many years, an MVP. Um, and I have a thing. If you've played a decade with one team in the franchise era, then you don't know that team another year. If you've given 10 or more years, you know, the, there you go. A decade with an MVP, your last image in that uniform is catching the final out of the World Series. I, I have no uh, I have no ill will or, or bad things to say about Freddie Freeman. The Braves gave up on him first that you know they traded for Olsen before Freddie Freeman signed with yeah. Los Angeles but, but, but uh, here's this is why I have to have a Braves insider on this okay as an outsider that whole thing just bewildered me like did Freddie Freeman forget to take out the trash why are people so why are they so quick to 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 you know step away from the Freddie Freeman you have a much better perspective. And, of course, Matt Olson has shown they haven't missed a step. What's your take of what was really going on there? Yeah, so, look, if you read the way things played out, Alex Anthopoulos, you know, made a strong offer, a final offer, and Freddie Freeman's agent said, hey, you either accept this or we walk away. He basically gave Alex Anthopoulos an ultimatum. Once that happened, Alex had to move on. I mean, it, with the – with the lockout and everything, it was a short time frame before the season started. Alex had to move on. And once Freddie's agent gave Alex that ultimatum, you know, and their a deal wasn't made, then Alex had to move on. Turns out the offer that Alex made was just as good, if not better, than the offer that he ended up signing with the Dodgers. And I think Freddie Freeman's actions afterwards speak louder. Um, than anything, Freddie has since fired his agent. Freddie has since balled since coming back to Atlanta. You know he didn't want to leave. And mm-hmm. by firing his agent, you know he didn't love the way things played out and the way his agent handled it. So, look, there's a lot of blame that you can place around. There's obviously some miscommunication. Mm-hmm. I, I credit Alex Anthopoulos. Obviously, I think he's a genius in what he's been doing. I think he made a fair offer to Freddie Freeman. Like you said, Freddie Freeman knows nothing to the Braves. Braves have a business to run. And Chipper Jones told Freddie Freeman straight up, you're not going to bluff Alex Anthopoulos in the Braves. You want to play with the Braves, you're probably going to have to take a little bit of a discount to do so. And look, I never thought Freddie Freeman wouldn't be an Atlanta Brave, but here we are. And, you know, again, I think a lot of blame goes on the agent. I think a lot of blame can go on Freddie Freeman and Alex Anthopoulos and just not picking up the phone and talking to each other. I think if that happens, Freddie Freeman is still with the Braves. But it's not the case, and when Alex got that ultimatum from Freddie's agent, he had to move on. He had to pivot before somebody else traded for Matt Olson, and he was left with nothing. So that's kind of how everything plays out from a Braves fan perspective. Certainly hate Freddie's not here anymore, but happy that 
able to get Matt Olson, and he's going to be great and be with the Braves for many years to come. And it's interesting that the Rileys and the Olsons and uh, and uh, uh, Acuna and maybe soon the Swansons, a lot of those players have signed long-term deals uh, to basically say that there's going to be a core of this Braves team is going to be together for the next couple of years. And uh, uh, it's just interesting that maybe – I wonder how much of the viewing of the the Freddie Freeman negotiation made some people say, hey, look, maybe we should just stick around here and not try to bluff this guy, but, you know, get ourselves signed up because this is a pretty good situation. Yeah, no, for sure. I, that's what that's kind of the thing I've talked about with some of my Braves fans is once Acuna got on board and you have a generational talent like that who's on board for a long time and then you see them lock up an Ozzy Albies and then guys want to be a part of that and be a part of that culture then you win a world series and so that makes it even more so you know we want to be a part of this franchise we want to be a part of this culture and look all these deals and the Braves have been criticized by it from outside you know fans or fans of other teams because a lot of these these deals seem pretty team friendly but you know that's kind of the culture and environment you play in and those players want to be a part of that now it's going to be interesting with Dansby Swanson he has the same agency as Freddie Freeman uses, and they haven't come to an agreement yet of any kind of deal. And Swanson, obviously having the best year of his career, could get a good contract in free agency. Braves just aren't a team that's going to overpay. And I go back you know, to what Chipper Jones told Freddie Freeman. You want to play for the Braves? You want to be part of this franchise? You might have to swallow your pride, take a little bit less than what you get elsewhere. But if you want to be a part of this franchise, you want to be a part of this winning core, and this young, great young core they have, then that's what you got to do. Well, I'll tell you what you got to do, listeners out there. You got to listen to Jake Mastriani and listen to his insights on his terrific show, which is called Lockdown Braves. And hey, thanks so much for making Lockdown MLB your first listen every day. Make Lockdown Braves a second listen. And now, your third listen, you should check out the Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022. It's an eight episode extravaganza to get you ready for the NFL season. The local team experts of the Lockdown Podcast Network, plus a betting angle from Lee Sterling of Lockdown Bets, all combining into one ultimate NFL preview. Search for the Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022 on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Jake Mastriani, thanks so much for being part of the Lockdown MLB podcast. This little Lockdown MLB, Lockdown Braves uh, crossover. Uh, the game's not over in Oakland. It's it looks like the Falcons are playing the Raiders. <laughs> uh, with the, except the one clue that's not happening is the Raiders now play in Las Vegas, and I keep forgetting that. But Jake Mastriani, thanks so much for being part of the show. Uh, you can follow us at Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter and Instagram. I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter. Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Looking after the state of the champs with Jake Mastriani. This has been Locked On MLB. I'm your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please.